Only two more races to go for the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. It's Martinsville this week. It is going to be, unfortunately, Phoenix the week after that. And uh, we had another reminder of uh, just how unfortunate that it's going to be after watching one of the more exciting races of the season and probably, uh, I would say, definitely top three races ever to be raced at Homestead Miami Speedway, C uh, CJ. Yeah, it was a great, great race. Um, again, further proof how this type of track with the progressive banking and the new car really suit this type of racing and we've seen it at a handful of tracks we anticipated it would be happening at homestead again and it absolutely delivered and of course uh, nascar and in their infinite wisdom continues to give homestead just one race a year uh, not the championship finale and then also next year decide they're going to tinker with a good thing and try to break it by moving it to the spring so <laughs> We'll see what happens next year. But, uh, yeah, I, I firm believe her Homestead um, produces great races with this car. They need to have they need to have more stops there. Well, I mean, after this race, if they're not, I mean, they, they cannot look, we understand they're not going to be able to do it for next season. But you must you can't be that dumb that you're not going to move it there in 2026. You just can't be. Uh, they've done dumber things in the past with the schedule, so. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> and, and you know what? If you're afraid of not having a homestead race there uh, from because it'll it'll be from 2025 and whatever March is it to yeah. 2026 in November. Like you said, just make sure you have two races. Exactly Keep the right. one early in the season, just like you have it next in 2025. And just add one for the championship and everybody will be happy. So... Because if they don't do it, if they don't make that decision in, in a very short period of time, then that means, uh, I mean, haven't they already been tinkering with the idea of moving it away from Phoenix anyway? They said, um, they've said many, many times when they first moved it to Phoenix that they envisioned moving the championship race around. And we've heard nothing and seen nothing about it since it's landed at Phoenix. And I can't remember how long it's been there. What has it been like four or five years at this point? I figure it's time. Uh, they keep changing every other playoff race. I'm not sure why they decide to keep this. Uh, I understand doing it, you know, for a couple of years at a time. Yeah, I get that because, you know, changing it up every year, maybe that's just a little bit too much, maybe making it a little bit too much of a lottery, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, teams and drivers can focus in on a specific track knowing that they're going to be going there for the next two to three seasons but when you get to this like four or five years plus yeah. and there's no talk of potentially going somewhere where the racing is better closer you have more better opportunity to to make passes not as affected uh, in the aerodynamics with the current configuration etc cetera, etc cetera. i'm not saying you need to put it at daytona or talladega i don't think you should nor a road course no I think Homestead's a great place to do it because it's a bread and butter track, 1.5 miles, uh, progressive banking, works really well with this car. Um, the top teams came to the top, so you can't say that it's a crapshoot like Atlanta kind of has become. Yeah, uh, They got to get off their butts and, and start really doing something about it. And like you said, they've got a contract negotiations, I'm sure, have already started with many of the places, uh, many of the venues for 26 and beyond and they've got to do it very quickly because it's all going to be wrapped up by next uh, i don't know what june july i think is when the schedule comes out thereabouts yeah because again if they don't want to say make some sort of dramatic decision for 2025 which they won't uh they just got to do this they have to uh and 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 because we're going to see it in a week and a half we're going to get it again we're, we're just whoever can Get the setup right, and maybe you're going to have another driver or two that'll be hanging in there because it is the final race, and it's going to be three, at least three drivers up front. And, but that's just because it's manipulated that way, uh, in some way. Again, I know it's not a nobody's saying it's fixed. Chastain won last year, so we get that. But come on, I mean, just imagine having a championship end this way. What we saw on Sunday. 
<laughs> it would be great. He had six of the top uh, playoff contenders finish first through six. And yeah, we're used to seeing that. We always say at Phoenix, like you said, the top four will finish first through fourth usually because yeah. that's the way it works. But it was a close race. I mean, 97, 47, 21, three and 81 laps led from the top five. If that's not competitive on a 267 lap race, I'm not sure what is. So Reddick gets it done. And uh, there you go. Right off the bat, we said last week, you got to take one of those four drivers that was on the outside and boom, just like that, that exact, exactly what happened in one race. So let's take a look now at the updated futures. And so oh, Reddick, Reddick's going to be even favorite with Logano. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see Reddick favored, though, by a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. So maybe something like 350 to 400 something like that or uh 250 to 300 i don't know how they do it but i'd say probably 250 to 300 all right because you get to the point where you're down to four folks so One 250 race. yeah yeah exactly right all right it's 300 and 300 so they both got reddick and logano even and then bell is going to be 350 yeah that sounds about right <laughs> I might go with, I'll go with four to one. Three, oh, he's even. He's even favorite. Wow. There you go. So I guess we know out of those three drivers, who's going who's gonna to be the favorite if Bell's in. Yep. All right. And then Larson should be at, uh, wow, uh, Byron's leading, but Larson will probably be ahead of Byron, right? Yeah, you think? I, would th I would think so. I mean, Hendrick finished one, two, three at Martinsville. Byron was the winner. Um, but I still think people, you know, Las Vegas and the fans, they're going for Larson still. So I, I'm going to say 450. Oh, 600. All right. Six to one. That's realistic. Byron Man. seven. And now we have three drivers left. So you got Hamlin, Blaney, and Elliott. Last week, their numbers were pretty high. So let's see where they're going to be now. I think Blaney is going to be first. Agreed. I'm going to put him at, I'm going to actually put him at 10 to 1. He was 11 last week, wasn't he? Was he? Somewhere okay. around it. I thought, maybe I'm, maybe I'm remembering. It could have been. I don't, I don't, I don't recall, but it could have been. Let's see. Denny Hamlin at 20. 20. What? <laughs> uh, 28. Dude, is this Respect. not like taking candy from a baby? Yeah, go for that. All right, Blaine, so there best you option. go. There's our advice right <laughs> off the bat. Because Blaney is like, I think, around 10 to 1 this week. Or no, 6 to 1 this week. What is he? Mm. He is 6 to 1. So, what would you rather have? Put your money on <laughs> Blaney at 6 to 1. So, if he wins, he's in the championship. Or 28 to 1. Come on. Do the math. So. Silly. Uh, yeah, I, I'd look. I, I'd go with def, uh, just like last week. I'm, uh, uh, if I'm starting all over, I'm, I'm putting money on Hamlin, Blaney, and Elliott to win the championship this week, and hope that one of them wins, and I've got one of them in there. So, wow. Okay, so there you go. Those are the championship odds. Let's now take a look at the race odds. And uh, by the way, before we get into this. Uh, let's uh, keep in uh, let's keep in mind as far as the playoffs are concerned. So Redick Logano, of course, in Bell's up by 29 points. So that's the reason why he was three to one. He really just basically the bottom line is as long as he doesn't get into any trouble, as long as they don't get into a wreck early uh, and have any mechanical problems early, they're going to be okay. So. It's, which is why he's three to one. So it's really going to be against Byron and the rest of them. Byron and Larson, even though Byron's up seven, that really is not going to matter just now. We'll see what happens as far as with the stage points and all. We'll see what, you know, after the first stage. But if Byron and Larson are both up there the first couple of stages and there's no movement there, then, um, then Larson might be in a position where he may have to win. So, 
another lesson we've been saying all year about yep. taking Larson to win the championship at those low numbers and look at he's one race away from being eliminated. Exactly right. So Bell has to basically just ensure that Byron doesn't outscore him by 22 points. So to your point, just doesn't have to have any trouble. As long as he doesn't have any trouble, he's going to be through regardless of what happens. Uh, could be Larson, Hamlin, Blaney, Elliott, any of those guys win from below the cut line. As long as Byron does not score Bell by 22 points, he, Bell is going to be in. Um, and then, like you said, if uh, Byron and Larson kind of duke it out, even Steven through the first couple of stages, Larson most likely will be in a must win situation by the end. And it really uh, is, is, look, Denny, uh, I guess he has a little chance of getting in without winning, but he really needs something happen to Byron. It might Correct. be able to catch Larson if, if Larson is like 20th or something like that. I guess it's possible, you know, if he doesn't get much stage points and Hamlin wins the first two stages, that kind of thing. It's possible Hamlin can catch Larson and then with By something happens to Byron. Um, but chances are, and we all know Blaney and Elliott definitely have to win. It was real crazy looking at the points and, and uh, on Sunday and seeing like when Blaney was ahead mm -hmm. and you see Blaney's ahead and he's third in the in the, in the playoffs and then when he's in second place he's 40 points behind it's yep. just crazy so yeah i really like that graphic because it is so misleading because it assumes the race ends at that specific moment and doesn't take into account the fact that more points are out there to be had more cars could drop out etc cetera, etc cetera. so i don't like the fact that just because one of those guys is in the lead that they automatically put them at the top of that list it yeah. just doesn't make yeah, and boy, it just what a heartbreak for me and Ryan Blaney. Uh, definitely he more for Blaney. It. He admitted it after the after the race. Um, I'm not sure if it was immediately after, if it was Monday or Tuesday, but he said uh, he guessed wrong. <laughs> he had two options: protect the low or protect the high, and he guessed wrong. And so, uh, obviously, still kind of weighing on him. Yeah, I, I honestly don't. That you, you're always going to second guess yourself. But uh, look, Tyler Reddick. Uh, he he had no I mean he even kind of said it after the race that he had no idea what he just did uh, and really if that wasn't the last lap he never would have tried it uh, yeah. he was going very fast and he was going dangerously fast on the outside and but he had to that was the only way he was going to win the race and he and he and he went for it and he got it and now you can say what you want about, like I said, if Blaney had gone up, but it's all second guessing stuff. And, and if he's going to beat you that way, then he's going to beat you that way. I mean, what are you going to do about it? What you're going to do is get back out there again uh, next week, this week, and get it done. Okay. So, yeah, that was, uh, that sucked. Um, this week at Martinsville, short track, because they've been racing here for a very long time. A uh, short track like Bristol, Richmond. Now, they consider New Hampshire the most similar track to Martinsville. Uh, it, it's flat, like Martinsville. Uh, New Hampshire's a one-mile track, so it's you know a little bigger, of course. But and, and I get the similarities. But once again, when you take a look at it, there are some drivers that don't do particularly well at New Hampshire, and they do well at Martinsville and vice versa. So you can use it a little bit uh, in your handicapping. I wouldn't go all in on it. I would also definitely consider just it's a short track so how did the drivers do in short tracks this year in general had to do at bristol had to do at richmond so we're going to get into that byron's the uh the, the the winner of the race earlier this year i think that was in april it was and he won from the 18th position so this is important uh this is actually one of those races where and you know what uh, we're, we're going to only have a handful of races before Homestead again. So keep in mind, because I am, that qualifying doesn't really matter at Homestead. So qualifying does not matter here either uh, because we've had f four straight and five of the last six winners that started, on the, uh, started outside the top 10. Uh, that was 11th, 13th, 18th. That was Byron this year, 19th and 20th. Four of the five next gens were under that uh, number there of outside the top 10. So coincident or not, 
maybe not. Maybe it's the next gen showing you that, hey, just because we don't qualify well here, we got a good enough car, we can, we can make it up. Uh, Blaney, the only Ford to win at Martinsville in the last 10 races, and we know exactly how important that was to Blaney. Um, didn't Blaney do this similar? I mean, I'm not saying he won yet, but didn't he have like a really good finish last year at uh, Homestead? At Homestead? Uh. And then win? at uh, Martinsville? Good question. I'm going to have to go back and look. I can't remember what he did at Homestead the year before. Let me see here. 2023. Blaney was, yeah, second at Homestead. There you go. So what was Blaney on Sunday? Second. In the top. Yeah. I like second. that karma. So anyway. So Blaney was was able to use that momentum and and break that streak to Ford uh, streak. Four Chevy winners in the last six, all Hendrick drivers. Five of the last eight winners at Martinsville, all Hendrick drivers, and that includes all four of them. Uh, Byron has got two wins, the other one each. So Hendrick very good here, and you have two Hendrick drivers on the outside looking in right now. So that makes it interesting. As we uh, start breaking this down. Okay. Let us get going. So we'll start with the... Now again, the race winner is all the way to the right. So keep that in mind. Let's go with these... Uh, tell you what. Let's go with these first five. There you go. All right. So you got Larson four, Hamlin four, Blaney six, Byron Elliott eight. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is, <laughs> this oh, is not, what for for Hamlin and 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 Blaney and Elliot on the race that they have to win. Four, six and eight, but they'll give you 28 and above 40 for Elliot for the championship. Yeah. You've got to sing me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so why would anybody no. be dumb enough? <laughs> to wager this week's race on Blaney, Elliott, mm -mm. or Hamlin. No way. That's crazy. <laughs> now look, hopefully if you want to pick, you have if you want yeah, if you want to pick any of those guys for Sunday, just do them for the championship. Do all three of them for the championship. That's it. Crazy. Now, hopefully you followed our futures advice because out of those three we definitely uh, have said enough times that, you know, in certain spots, Blaney was good here, there, whatever. So hopefully you have Blaney already. But let's just say you have, you should have one of these drivers, one of these three already set in championships somehow with your futures. And if you do, then now you're down, only down two. So now you, it's even, you've even got a better, this, this has now even made it better for you where you can just go, all right, now I'm going to take those other two and I'm going to, Picked him to win the championship, and I'm set there. Hopefully, so. And hopefully, you have Bell there too. Um, yeah. All right. So yeah. So all right. So let's just take a look at the race. If you want to bet on the race, and there's fantasy involved in this race too. So, uh, Larson Hamlin. So let's uh, compare these two. Actually, I tell you what. Let's compare uh, Larson with Elliott since they're Hendrick. So. Let's do, uh, let's actually, yeah, let's do those two. So Larson, really good in, on the short tracks this year. Uh, yep. Seventh or better in all four races. Won Bristol. Matt, don't forget, just a few months ago, dominated Bristol. So keep that in mind. So we got one win here, but a lot of the success Larson has had at Martinsville has been when he made the move to Hendrick. Um, he's got three poles in the last six, but important to note, only one win came from that. Uh, actually, he's, he's got one win. He's got three poles in the last six, but again, he only has one win, and that win did not come from any of his poles. So keep that in mind. He won when he started 19th, and that's, again, why it's important that this is a race that you're better off waiting until after qualifying. And just now, definitely for the favorites, 
Now, some of the long shots, again, it's always going to be, do you want to roll the dice now so you don't lose on the number if they have a good qualifying run? We'll get into that later. But any of these favorites, look, if you, not only are we asking you to, at least on three of them, to bet the futures to win the championship as it is, but just wait. Wait, wait until qualifying for these guys. Uh, Larson was fourth in New Hampshire. If you want to put that in there, he's also had a pretty good career at Hampshire overall. Uh, even though he has only led 22 laps in his career at New Hampshire, but it, you know he's had some good numbers. Uh, in the next gen at Martinsville, he's finished second, sixth, first, and second in his last four, with an average of 6.0 in five next gen races. Then you have Elliott, who also only has one win, but he's led a boatload of laps. Matter of fact, he's led 911 laps in his last eight races. At Martinsville, that's an, that's an average of 113 laps a race. Now, he has six top fives in his career, but just one in his last six. The good news is that was in April when he finished third and led 64 laps. And overall, on the short tracks, he's been good. Elliot's been good on the short tracks this year. Uh, he's got a couple top fives, four top tens, a runner up. He was 18th at New Hampshire, but he was on the pole, led 41 laps. So, look, the biggest difference here is obvious. You're getting double Elliott 8-1, to one, Larson 4-1. to one. And based on what we just saw last week, when Larson was trying to win, I mean, he was desperate to win. Not as desperate as Elliott, but you could tell he wanted to win. He, he understood how important it was to win. And yet Elliott had a better run than Larson. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to go ahead and do what we've always been doing here. And I'd, I'd rather take Elliott and pair him up with someone else then go with Larson at four to one. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. Um, Larson, remember earlier this year, started on the pole and finished second. It was a Hendrick one, two, three, as I mentioned. Elliott came out the uh, lowest of the three, um, but Larson led eighty six laps. And like you said, if you you know the nine hundred plus laps led recently, but throughout his career, over eleven hundred laps led at Martinsville. 11 top 10s from 18 finishes, just the one win that came from eighth position from Elliott that was with the old car. Uh, But it does look like he's figuring out this new car here. Uh, He wasn't bad in the new car. He finished uh, in the top 10 several of those times, 17th uh, in this race last fall, but then seemed to have figured it out in the spring. So I think Hendrick comes very strong. And, um, you know, any of the three... Larson, Byron, or Elliott uh, could be in the mix for the win. Why not go for the one that gives you the best return? Uh, that could be either Elliott or Byron. Yeah, uh, adding Byron in there, of course, is the other Hendrick driver. Uh, is again, he's got the two wins, but not as good on the short tracks this year. He doesn't have a top five on the short tracks this year, uh, and he was 26 in New Hampshire, uh, even though he started third. Matter of fact, he didn't have a top 10 in seven races at New Hampshire. So... Uh, but as I just said, screw New Hampshire when you won this race earlier this year, leading 88 laps. He led 212 laps in his 2022 win. Um, yeah, Byron's, Byron right now, he begins the race feeling he has to win this one too. So doesn't it, I mean, it is, we've, again, we've been saying this the last few weeks. Why, especially knowing how even these drivers are now, why on earth wouldn't you just go, I'm going to take Elliott and Byron instead of Larson at four to one. Yeah, you get both for the price of one. Uh, The only thing going against Byron, we've been saying this every single week, is that no driver has swept victories at the same track this season, and Byron did win in April. So uh, that, you know, puts a little bit... It'd be a good time for it. It would be a perfect time for it. Um, And Hendrick was one, two, three uh in that track in that race so um at this track so all three are going to be i anticipate all three are going to be really competitive uh but yeah byron and elliott for the price of larson give me the two versus the one okay so now uh let's talk about hamlin and blaney uh the problem i have with hamlin here is the number i think hamlin should be no low, lower than six to one um because look, as much as I don't like taking Larson at four to one, I certainly and hell ain't taking Hamlin at four to one. That's for sure. I mean, if I'm going Larson or Hamlin, I'm taking Larson nine times out of ten. It's just you know, so uh, you know, I, we completely understand what we're dealing here with Kyle Larson. 
and he's much better than Denny Hamlin right now, uh, especially with the way the Chevy's been. And even though Hamlin has this incredible history at Martinsville, he hasn't won in his last 18 appearances since 2015. He was 24th in New Hampshire this year, so that's not good. But the good thing, there is a good thing, and and, and I think this is why he's 4-1. to one. I don't think it's because of his history at this track. Because as I said, he hasn't won since 2015. I think it's because of his history this year on the short tracks. He has been just, he's the best. There's been no driver better than Denny Hamlin on the short tracks this year. Um, and uh, I, I think the the only issue is, is that his worst result was this track. As strange as that is. So he was, he's got two wins, a second and a fourth between Richmond and Bristol, but here in April, 11th. He did lead 66 laps. So, and, and, and just looking what happened last week, the crew does a great job to get him out there. Great job. They almost stole it the way Logano did a few weeks ago. Denny Hamlin had no right potentially winning that race on Sunday. But uh, he didn't. And he, I don't know what it is, but they just don't have a fast car right now. And you can see that on Sunday. They were in prime position to win that race. And he just, he gets passed by Blaney. He gets passed by Reddick. And yeah, he, he just, uh, he can't take advantage of it right now. And I think that would be an issue. I, I can't see it right now with Denny. It'd be a nice story. You know, there's a lot of people who would be rooting for him. But, um, you know, unless maybe they figure out a way to get him out there late, like really late on Sunday somehow, uh, I just, I can't see it. Not at four to one. Yeah. Oh, definitely not at four to one. But even out of this entire group, uh, I'm not sure I would put him at the at at the top if all the odds were even uh, yep. for all of the folks. And it's just a result of the fact that he's not been racing well. Like you said, it, it's a team sport. The team did all they could, like you said, to give him probably his best finish of you know th- probably the playoffs. I, I'd have to look at his results going back, but it's it been was. a while. <clears throat> It's been a while since he's been in the top five. So what makes you think that if he got passed by two folks for the win, two guys for the win a week ago, uh, what makes you think that he's going to be able to hang on to it at Martinsville? Maybe something happens and the the crew, like you said, gets him out there, um, fresh tires or you know track position or whatever. That can easily happen at this place, and he's got a history of doing it. But like you said, hasn't been in victory lane here back since 2015. Even with the third place, he had to step up, and maybe it's a signal of a trend to come, uh, but I still think it's too late. Um, I'm, I'm pretty convinced he's not going to be able to, to make it through. Uh, we'll see if I get proven wrong or not. So out of this bunch, um, I would take anybody over Hamlin, definitely anybody over Hamlin at 4-1 to one as a co-favorite, uh, but certainly of the two that we're comparing, Ryan Blaney, I think, is your, your better option. He's just... Um, you know, he, he did it last year. Uh, no reason why he wouldn't be able to come in and do it again. He started 11th and, and won there. Uh, he, he, in last fall's race, he started ninth and finished fifth in the spring race, didn't lead any laps. But, uh, you know, Penske, they've got the strategy down. They've got the teamwork down. They've got quick cars. Blaney was in contention to win until Reddick's fresh tires kind of bit him last week, so no reason why that can't be the case again this week at a place that he just recently tasted success. And by the way, he hasn't finished lower than 11th at Martinsville since 2018. That's 11 straight, 11th or better for Ryan Blaney at Martinsville with eight top fives. Two runner-ups and the win last year when he needed it. Matter of fact, if you combine that stat from Blaney... And Joey Logano, Joey Logano has 10 straight top 10s at the track. So Penske is dialed in here, which I'm just, based on what Blaney did last week, and we all we all kind of felt that that was coming anyway, that mm-hmm. Blaney's going to do something here in the next couple of weeks, and boom. Now, was that his shot? Could be. But I'll say this. I think that similar to Christopher Bell, in my mind, all Ryan Blaney needs to do is stay out of trouble. If he stays out of trouble, doesn't have a problem with the car, doesn't something happen, get a wreck, bad luck wreck, which is he's been prone to happen to him. If he, if nothing weird happens to Ryan Blaney, I think he's going to win. 
I did so. see it. <clears throat> um, keep in mind, not good on the road courses this year. So, one top ten out of four. He uh, did have uh, what was that eleventh? Did you say he was this year? Uh, in, April? When, in April, he was fifth. Oh, fifth. Okay, so that was, that was his best short track finish, and that's unlike Denny. That's that's a good thing for Ryan. That his best actually happened uh, here at the track. And uh, he is going to try to be also, what, the first defending champ to win? To defend his uh, championship from last year. So Byron and Blaney are kind of under the same boat there. So anyway, yeah. Uh, And you're also getting a couple extra points with Blaney over Hamlin. Uh, You know what's weird? Uh, Denny Hamlin... By the way, he, he he won the second stage on Sunday. It's his first stage win this playoffs. Yep. So he hadn't had a stage win, I don't believe, since Indianapolis. It had been a long time. I'm not sure exactly how long I forgot that stand off the top of my head, but it had been quite a while. Even though he has five top tens in his last six, it just, it just doesn't feel like it. Yep. He's had one of those runs. He's been a top, he's been a top ten car recently, but he has not had the edge that would put him into championship contention, which is running in the top five consistently, being out there leading laps and having the chance to to, to win. And and last week was the first time we saw him out there leading laps and coming away with the top five finish. And like I said, I think it's too little too late. And I think circumstances um, of his team and pit stops were what got him there. I just don't think the car has the speed, like you said. So we'll see how it plays out in Martinsville. And Kyle Larson, he's trying to win... For the third time in the last uh, round playoff uh, race. So he won at Bristol in the cutoff. He won at Roval in the cutoff. And he's trying to win Martinsville in the cutoff. So uh, we know that he's more than capable of doing it. And that's exactly what. But this is the deal with Ryan Kyle Larson. If you, if you, he's got the two wins. But at Talladega, of course, we, we know that's just a crapshoot. Um, and I think that might have been his best finish in his entire career at Talladega. If you throw that out, all of his other races were outside the top 10. So that's the thing with Kyle Larson. It's just, you know, really weird is that as good as he is, why is he more consistent? That's the thing I don't understand. So I think that's the thing that might impact his chances of winning a championship. Meanwhile, Christopher Bell has six straight of seventh or better Three straight top fives. Uh, Byron has five straight sixth or better. Um, and uh, we'll see if all of this matters. Because when Tyler Reddick won, he did not have a top five in the playoffs until uh, until Sunday. And his last top five was his win at Michigan. Um, now, Ken, does that mean he's back? I don't know. But he sure looked pretty fast. Winning qualifying, winning practice. And the difference was, as soon as he got into dirty air, he was just a top five car. He wasn't Mr. Dominant. And uh, that's what made it interesting. So, but it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't like he wasn't doing anything. He was, he was the, he should have been the favorite on Sunday after what happened on Saturday. And he just so happened to uh, kind of seal the deal late. All right, uh, let's move on to the rest. So they got Bell, Logano, Truex, Reddick, and Gibbs. And out of this group, well, of course, Bell, see, I don't think it makes sense to, to go with Bell, except the fact that at some point in this race, he could have it sewn up. And then, therefore, he can do whatever he wants. And he can go and, you know, uh, figure out a way to win a race and go with that. Uh, he's had top tens in all of the road course, all of the short tracks this year. Uh, he has two wins and a runner up in five New Hampshire races. So keep that in mind. Uh, He's got the win in 2022 here, but it's also his only top five at Martinsville. He led 150 laps in that race. In his other eight, no top fives, nine laps. So out of, you know, the the, the, the interesting thing is, is Bell and Reddick, you see Reddick there. Reddick is not good here at all. Boy, did he, no wonder why he went fast on that last lap. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he, he knew he, he didn't have no chance to win uh, this race if he needed to win and get in. So this is not a good track at all for Reddick, and Reddick has not been very good on the short track. So 
he's not even going to be a factor, I think. He's going to probably be in the 20s this week. He's already going to be dreaming of... Okay, he can't do anything this week anyway at this track. But Bell, uh, you know, he, he might have been... Uh, he's, he's better than Redick here, but not, you know, not by a whole lot. This is not a great track for Bell. So uh, I think he's also very fortunate that he doesn't have to worry about it too much. Yeah, uh, quite honestly, on, on this page, there's, you know, besides Bell, because Bell's just been uber consistent, and I think that continues through this weekend as well, but he hasn't been fan- as good as the guys that we, we've already talked about here. The only guy that I'm really interested that's on the screen right now, and you get he's a must-play from a fantasy perspective, um, and he might be a good play from uh, where his odds are there at 12-1, to 1, but that would be Joey Logano. Uh, he hasn't finished outside the top 10 here since 2019, the spring of 2019. Uh, he won back in, he won the race before that, actually, 2018, the fall race. Uh, his last five at this track, second, sixth, second, fifth, and sixth, and he led 84 laps in the spring. So like you said, uh, when we were talking about Blaney, Penske's got this track down. Joey Logano is, of course, locked in, so he's going to be doing what he can to be able to help out Blaney. If they're running one, two, I guarantee you Logano moves aside and Blaney magically comes through and wins. Uh, that's how that's how Penske operates, and that's how any top championship organization in NASCAR should operate, uh, and that's what exactly what they'll do. So that's why I'm saying Logano, from a fantasy perspective, his results from a top 10, just unparalleled almost should be up there with the guys that we talked about at the beginning uh, if we were talking about top 10s uh, but everybody else on this page not so much like you said maybe bell he's got to play a conservative he's got to get some stage points to be able to make sure that byron doesn't get too far ahead of him but then like the, like you said after that you know reins are off he can go do what he wants Truex only has one top five, I think, in the last top five here. Reddick's never really done anything here. And by the way, Gibbs has never done anything here either for uh, races 19th, 18th, 18th, and 19th for an average finish of 18.5. I have no idea why he would be on the same page as Logano at this point. Um, So, yeah, Logano is the one for me out of this bunch if I'm going to take anybody. Definitely have him in your fantasy rosters. Christopher Bell, he's there from a consistency standpoint, but I think he plays the beginning a little bit more conservative than um, than maybe betters would like. Yeah, I think the odds make a lot of sense. Uh, Bell is definitely the one to beat here in this group, but uh, you know he is ten to one. Logano, uh, like you said, twelve to one, and also he's led two hundred laps or more three times at this track, including 309 laps in his 218 win. So yeah, and he led 84 in April uh, when he finished sixth from the sixth position. So he's been on the pole six times at this track. So I completely agree with you. You know they're gonna wanna do whatever is possible to help Blaney out. So that means they're gonna try to be a winning car. And so, cause this way if Blaney's not, well, we've got one. We're gonna try to show you how you can be one too. So, and if something happens where Blaney, let's say, get into a wreck and he's just out of it somehow and Logano happens to be in a position to win, then, yeah, why not go out and get it done? Uh, especially if you can knock out uh, uh, Kyle Larson uh, Absolutely. from getting in. So that would also make a lot of sense for any of those drivers uh, competing against Larson. Uh, Truex, big surprise. In his first two races in the, in the short tracks this year, second and fourth, when everything was going well. But the last two... <laughs> 24th and 37th so not going well also 18th here this year so even though he's got a very good history here like Denny Hamlin just like Denny Hamlin it hasn't come lately matter of fact just one top five with the next gen car Um, so yeah I just don't think it's looking good for Truex to get a win and I also don't think as we move now to this next group that it's going to be a Kyle Busch um, a Kyle Busch win for 2024 if he's going to get it done uh, I guess it's going to have to be in Phoenix. He's going to have to pull a chest aim because he's just not good here. Uh, just look at uh, Kyle Busch's numbers. Yes, he's got a couple of wins. Yes, he's led over 1,400 laps, but he has led no laps in his last seven, just five laps in his last 11 combined, and he's got a 20.0 average in five next-gen uh, appearances. Uh, as far as the rest of this group, the one that sticks out to me, there are two that sticks out to me, um, and that is Briscoe at 22 to 1 and Wallace at 28 to 1. So how, how nice would it be for uh, Michael Jordan's team to go back to back? Bubba's 28 to 1, 
He had another good run last week, like we thought he might, as a good long shot. And I think he's going to have the same thing going for him this week. Uh, if you look at Wallace, fourth in April from the second position. And in the short tracks this year, he was third just recently at Bristol. And the fourth uh, a few months ago at Richmond. So he's been really good on the short tracks lately. And he's got a 9.6 average uh, as a next-gen driver at this track. Uh, Briscoe, meanwhile, uh, even though he doesn't have great numbers on the short tracks this year, he was 10th in April here. And all five of his next-gen races at this racetrack are top 10s. He led 142 laps in those five races, too. So um, certainly out of this bunch, you got to look at Briscoe. And like Logano, I think Briscoe is another one that you've got to have in your fantasy rosters this week because he's a top 10 machine. Ninth, ninth, fifth, fourth, and tenth with 142 laps led across that span. That's excellent at this track. It's way better than Kyle Busch over the same period. Way better than Chastain. Uh, Wallace is picking it up. Uh, the Wallace, uh, I think he was fourth here, if I'm not mistaken, uh, earlier this year, and that was his fourth straight finish at this track of 11th or better. Uh, so Wallace is getting it done. Uh, he's only led 23 laps at the track, and that was back in 2021. So he's got to get up into the top five, and he's got to start leading some laps. So, that, so out of this bunch, definitely Briscoe and Wallace are the two that catch my attention. Briscoe is certainly above uh wallace just based on his his consistency and uh, like i said a top 10 machine you know brad keselowski if we were talking maybe five years ago probably would have been a top choice because of his two wins at the track and consistent top fives but he hasn't finished inside the top 10 uh since 2021 at the next track. gen so, yep exactly right uh we talk about the tracks where this switching car some like road courses for elliot elliot's not figured out the next gen on the road courses he's starting to get there uh, this might be the same at Martinsville for Keselowski for whatever reason. He had it nailed in the old style uh, with this new one. He just doesn't have it. Yeah, 26.8 average for Keselowski in the next gen. Uh, and only 15 laps led in his last 10 races. That was since, he, since the uh, 2019 win when he led 446 laps. Uh, that's domination. That's also boredom, which we had a lot of. Uh, before the next gen. Um, so yeah, uh, we're uh, in agreement there. Uh, let's now let's check one more thing out. Yeah, okay. Let's now move ahead with the next group and the rest of uh, the long shots here. You got, um, these are all the drivers before you get to 100 to 1. And, and uh, once again, uh, Bowman is the one that uh, sticks out. He's 35 to 1. He's won here before. He's driving a Hendrick car. He hasn't gone away since the penalty. He's still, you know, been competing. Eighth earlier this year here. He's got a 9.4 average in seven playoff races when I do not include the Roval penalty. That's really impressive. So, look, he hasn't led a ton of laps here. Matter of fact, he's led 10. Nine of them came on his win. That's a typical Alex Bowman kind of deal. Uh, you know, come from behind late and surprise everybody with a win. But you're getting 35 to 1. So, yeah, out of this group, I think uh, he is the no-brainer. I, I would just note that Josh Berry uh, did finish third at New Hampshire. Even though he didn't have a great result earlier this year here, he did start seventh. So he may not be a bad idea as far as, uh, you know, a long shot fantasy play. And uh, Ryan Priest, I know we haven't really talked about him uh, you thought a couple of years ago he was going to possibly uh, step up, uh, and it's just never happened. Uh, he's 90 to 1, but let's keep in mind he was ninth in this race earlier this year. He was seventh at Bristol just a couple of months ago, and uh, he led 135 laps from the pole last April. So, a couple of interesting things there to note because I don't think we've talked much about Ryan Priest at all for the last couple of years. No, we haven't. Um, and it, it was the reason I thought he was going to do well was because he was coming into a good team, had Kevin Harvick as his teammate, good equipment, etc. He had paid his dues. He was winning on the, the series that he was racing in before coming back to Cup. Um, and just for whatever reason, hasn't connected. But I'm glad you brought him up because last week he finished in the top 10, started 35th and finished 10th, which was just an awesome outing for him. <clears throat> So good stuff from Ryan Priest. I do think he's might might be worth from a fantasy perspective if you're looking, uh, depending upon where the prices are, 
Um, if he is further on down the list, he might be one worth putting in because of the fact that he has raced really well at the short tracks this year. Uh, Alex Bowman, like you said, of that group that you've got on the screen, he, he's the one to go with because I mean, he's a Hendrick car. Hendrick dominated here. He's been racing better now in the playoffs, even with the disqualification. Um, he's still finishing inside the top 10, challenging for top five. So he should probably, uh, or wouldn't surprise me, put it that way, if he were a contender again this weekend. And, you know, he'd have to choose who he's going to help out, whether it's Elliot Byron or Larson. <clears throat> But we'll see how that kind of plays out. Um, I Also, you know, Austin Sindrick, uh, another one that's going to be out there trying to help his teammate, Ryan Blaney. He's got a finish of 11th uh, in, from 2022. He was ninth from the 21st starting position in this race last year. Uh, but still, I think uh, out of this group, Alex Bowman is the one to be talking about. And even if we go back to Chase Briscoe, um, obviously not a deep long shot as we've moved to here, but if you look at just average finish of guys that are active right now, they've got more than five starts at this track. <clears throat> Chase Briscoe is fourth with seven starts and an average finish of 10.8. That beats Elliott, that beats Kyle Busch, that beats Keselowski, that beats Byron, that beats Truex, that beats Bell, and that beats Larson. So Chase Briscoe, another one you want to make sure you've got in your fantasy uh, lineups. And if you're looking for kind of a medium long shot, I think Chase Briscoe might be the best option there. Okay, so let's go to picks. So who are you going to go with? Who's your top pick? I'm going to go with Byron. I've been with him all season. Um, let's see if he steps it up. Uh, he, he did did not disappoint last week. Just other people were better. Uh, he's been pretty consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and take Byron. All right, I am uh, gonna no brainer here it, and I'm going with Blaney. So, uh, who else are you gonna go with? Who's your uh, medium long shot? Is that gonna be the driver you just mentioned? It will be. I will take Briscoe. All right, I'm gonna go ahead with Bubba. Good. My other option would have been Bubba, and then my long shot, um, deep long shot. Hmm. Could be any long shot. Eh, I'll make it hard for you, and I'll take Bowman. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, the only other one uh, would be Priest, but he can't win a race. I was flipping the coin in my head between Priest and Briscoe and just deciding how far I wanted to go. You know, I've been very impressed uh, with how uh, Hosevar has been uh, driving. You know what? You know who'd be a great one right there you had on the screen? Todd Gilliland. Oh, really? Yeah, five starts at Martinsville, uh, one top 10, uh, but an average finish of 18.2. He finished 10th and 13th in his last two races. He was 13th uh, in the fall of 2022. Uh, so three top 15s out of five tries at Martinsville, Todd Gilliland, actually not bad at what was he, 110, something like that. Okay, interesting. Um, I tell you what, uh, because I don't really think there are a whole lot of other drivers that are worth going with, I'll, I'll, I'll just wing it and, and do Kyle because of the fact that he is driving a Chevy. Uh, so, um, but it just shows you that there, and, and we know he'd like to win a race. Um, they're just, you know, this is gonna be one of those races, I think like we saw last week. You know, I think we're gonna see all the top drivers battling it out. I agree. And, now, I, I don't do know agree. exactly how it's gonna be any more exciting. I don't think it can be, but we'll see. Have you, uh, do you remember any uh, really exciting Martinsville races uh, lately, the last few years with the next gen? Uh, Ross Chastain, Hale, Mellon, and that's it. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. that, and that's only the last lap, last two corners because of him, right? <laughs> the rest of them have been pretty processional and not very, not very entertaining. Certainly not like Homestead we saw. That's true. All right. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, that's going to wrap it up here for our NASCAR coverage. Uh, we will be back again for uh, our final regular season uh, race of the year. 
well, actually, our, our final race of the year, I should say, uh, that is going to be uh, in Phoenix next year. So we're going to have our championship preview next week. We'll see exactly who's going to be there. Um, they have no idea whether or not uh, we're going to have any sort of bonus coverage uh, this week or next week. I just bring that up because things are starting to get really exciting. So, you know, if anything happens and, uh, you know, and, 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 it, and it's worth coming on and just talking for five or ten minutes after uh, one of these last two races, you know, maybe I'll do that. Um, and whether or not CJ can join me or not, um, you know, that's... Uh, that, that's that's another completely different scenario, uh, but uh, don't <laughs> don't rule it out uh, because I, I I was close to actually uh, getting on uh, a couple of days ago. So uh, and these are just going to get bigger and uh, better as uh, as we close things out here for 2024. So that's it. Uh, likes, shares, comments, uh, subscribing, of course, is the most important thing. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, if you are an F1 fan, uh, we have our F1 coverage as well. So uh, they got a race this week in Brazil. So you got video. Matter of fact, uh, that video will be available uh, pretty much on Friday. Uh, that's when we're going to have CJ's uh, fantasy report from rotowire.com come out. Uh, this one is out today, which is Wednesday. We're recording on Wednesday again. We're probably going to have to do that, do that again next week. So just keep that in mind. I know we try to get Tuesdays, but it's looking like uh, Wednesdays is a little bit better for us at this point in time. But there's only one more to go. Uh, and then we'll let you know exactly uh, whether or not we'll be around after uh, the championship race. Uh, I'll have to talk to CG about that. If we have a post-race uh, kind of championship show, who knows? So stay tuned for all that. Let us know what you guys think. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that. And like I said, if you're an F1 fan, uh, check back on Friday for that. And then check back on Saturday for which uh, could be a very interesting post-qualifying and practice report. The starting lineup video, uh, we had an early one last week. Very surprised how early they did it last week. So I'm not sure exactly when they're going to have it uh, set for this week. But whenever it is on Saturday, I will be there shortly after uh, the poll is announced. And then uh, I'll go over an updated list of, of course, the speed charts, what the odds might look at. And uh, again, like we said, qualifying is not going to be very important as long as you're not, you know, 35th and 34th or anything like that. Uh, you, you're going to have a shot. So we'll, we'll let you know what we think about some of those bargains that might be available, uh, especially if they don't end up. Uh, in the top 10 in either session. So that's going to wrap it up. For CJ Badoon, I'm Greg DePama. We'll see you next time here talking NASCAR on the Prime Sports Network YouTube channel.